And there was canon law. Now, uh, common law uh, applied to all the commoners, see in the name, uh, whereas canon law applied to all the students and professors. And it was, it was essentially a set of rules and regulations put in place by the Catholic Church uh, that all the students and professors had to follow. And it was generally a lot of struggling on stage because it creates like a, a vortex and everyone gets stuck in there. Yeah. Which <laughs> was uh, originally under construction in Margaret Boothmore. She was the grandmother of Henry VIII, but she never finished the college. And that was because the point was constantly changing. Um, that's because she kept having miscarriages, and her daughter caught an eye for Anne Boleyn at the time as well. Um, so he requested to divorce her, uh, but the Catholic Church denied it. So he became very upset and began dissolving the Catholic Church in England. He started his own church. Church ministry. She was the head. He could essentially manipulate the rules to get that divorce. Uh, now, what are his intentions to do this? Uh, John Fisher was very upset. He actually began speaking out against the Reformation. For that, he was actually executed by Henry VIII. The tyrant Henry VIII was. He was actually really popular in the early years of his reign. Um, he actually, um, it was actually only until a jousting accident in 1531 where he actually uh, suffered a head injury and they say after that he became quite paranoid, uh, delusional and obviously tyrannical um, and that's probably what he's doing architecture. So for example, uh, King's College is a prime example of Gothic architecture so it's potentially made to look older than it actually is. These are student accommodations, incredibly nice rooms, but they're very small. Um, if you look at the centre, you'll see there's a clock tower, but there's no clock. Uh, the 
have any stories as to why this because they ran out of money while others believe that they left it unfinished just because uh, Trinity College had already made a clock tower so they didn't think to make a second one but essentially to, uh, to take the piss out of this uh, Trinity College they ring their clock tower twice one on behalf of themselves and one on behalf of St John's <laughs> Yeah, if you look to my left, uh, you'll see Trinity College. Now, these were originally two Catholic colleges, Michael House and King's Hall, which Henry wanted to dissolve due to its Catholic roots. Uh, but his last one, Captain Carr, persuaded him to leave some sort of legacy behind. And instead of dissolving the colleges, he merged them, along with seven hostels and a priory, to make Trinity College. Uh, he also invested a lot of the money from the reformations into the college and this made it uh, it would kill the bacteria so it was safer to drink uh, safer to drink that than it was to drink just normal water uh, I think it's I think it was the last 60 years all three of those husbands were incredibly rich and she actually inherited all their money and invested it in Clare College it's quite suspicious isn't it <laughs> They all died, they didn't all die in the same way. Did they? <laughs> it's a chapel. That's a chapel. So yeah. They also had chapels in the college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, this is the more busy fighting the war than they were building the chapel. But it was only until uh, Henry VIII was on the throne that he had enough of looking at the chapel unfinished. He decided to finish it a third smaller. <coughs> But, like I said, it's the second tallest building in Cambridge. The first tallest bu building is actually St John's Chapel, which I'll uh, show you on the way back. Too well after the war, and that's because he was discovered he was homosexual. It was a uh, criminal offence in those days. And he actually considered the father of computers. Uh, that's because he developed the first electronic relayed computer. When all computers before that were mechanical computers, which is quite a. Uh, while she was building this college, and so it was handed over to her successor, Elizabeth Woodville and Anne Neville. Uh, it's why it's called Queen's College, because it's built by three different queens. Busy, windy, huh? Yeah. Oof. On the way back, it's, been, uh, it's a bit difficult. <laughs> yeah. They only did self fires originally, though, but uh, and they introduced the river tours in the 80s. If you look to my left over there, you see Darwin's College. Darwin's College built in 1964, but did become part of the university. Uh, but none of them actually studied at Cambridge. Uh, two of them joined the RAF, and the other two joined a uh, Polytechnic College in London. But after that, they founded Pink Floyd. Um, any student coming from a uh, state run school, so it's less about uh, only to find a current overnight. And this, uh, you know, Oliver Cromwell is he actually yeah. used this building as a as his headquarters during the English Civil War, and they actually brought up all the bridges along the river, to set up a garrison here, apart from the bridge like Buckle in the archway. 
um, that's from all the troops and artillery being constantly positioned on the bridge and kind of buckled it over time. <coughs> the building looks so different from all the other buildings built here on the, on the river. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I do just what I do, and I hope you let me in, let me in. 